What's the crack, lads? Welcome back to the channel and welcome to another player review. And we're also going to be doing a training review and a training guide for Trent Alexander Arnold, Trippier, and Luke Shaw, who which are the Showtime edged crossing players. So we're going to go through this fairly quick. Uh, firstly, we're going to take a look at what Edge Crossing does. A lot of people have been asking me about that. You can find that out if you go to help, you go to general information, and then you go all the way down to player skills. And then that will give you a definition of the player skills here. So as you can see, we have got Edged Crossing, which enables the player to put in virtually rotating crosses that fall sharply. So it's a bit of a tongue twister. It's a bit of a, uh, a confusing one. But I think what it kind of means from having seen a lot of clips and um, people sending me clips and, and kind of their controls. It seems to be a mix between kind of low driven crosses um, with kind of like a trajectory on them that kind of like goes up and then down really quick. Um, and also a mix between that and stunning crosses, right? So I use a lot of stunning crosses. Um, so we will get into whether or not I think that they're worth it. Again, when you are looking at these players, lads, right? When you're looking at any of these players, any of these Showtime players, I've kind of said it before and I'll probably say it again. You don't, like, these aren't a necessity. These players, the way I look at them, are kind of like, um, you know, they're kind of like a luxury item. They're kind of like the cherry on top of the cake, really. You know, you can still have the cake. You can buy your players for GP. You can get some really good standard players. You can get some players that are going to get you to Division 1 and compete with the best of them. Obviously, the epics and all that have a big advantage because of the form and the unwavering form. If they have that, they always get boosted. But for these, you know, and it goes along with Haaland and the guys that they brought out with the phenomenal finishing, I do think that it's kind of a personal uh, choice whether or not you go for these because you can get players that are extremely similar to them. If you want to see alternative players for GP um, in a specific video for these, I can do that as well. But we might try and get some in depending on how long this video is. So you've got a 97 rated Trent, 95 Trippier and Shaw. We're going to start with Trent. He's probably the highlight pack of them. He's a cross specialist. And I would definitely 100% be playing Trent as a right midfielder. I would not be playing him as a defensive option with the way the gameplay is at the moment. Because I just think that if you are using a cross specialist, you want to be playing him as part of a 3-5-2. Or else if you are playing a 4-4-2 or a 4-3-3 or any alteration of that formation where you're going to be bombing up and down the flank... I think you need to be very narrow in midfield and let Trent just pretty much concede the right flank to Trent or the left flank um, to a player that's a cross specialist. Now, when we take a look at his stats here, I do like the fact that he has one touch pass, but he has no um, defense capabilities whatsoever. No defensive stats or skills that are really shine out for him. So that's a bit of an issue if you're used to playing with like a defensive minded right back or used to playing with a right back that's, you know, predominantly a uh, center back like Koundé or uh, Tommy Asu or somebody like Mar Marquinhos or somebody like that. But when we go over to eFootballDB here, we're going to take a look. Hello, boys. Here I am. Um, we're going to take a look at Trent, uh, who's here, and we're going to take a look at his stats, right? So he goes 37 levels, as you can see here. Um, for me, with Trent, lads, I'm just going to be really kind of dominating uh, the wings with his passing ability. So I'm going to leave that at 96 and 88. So you get a boost, obviously, when the player has got an 88 rated stat. When his form arrow is up, you get a plus two boost to that. So that drives it up to the 90 range. Um, you've also got the dribbling. I probably, if I'm going to be playing him as a right wing back, I do want to have that as well. Um, once tight possession is going to go up to 80, we're happy enough with the rest of the stats there. And obviously with dexterity, we're going to go as high as we can with that because we do want that acceleration and we also want the balance. So we'll probably go 78 with the balance there, 85 with the offensive awareness. And then the rest is going to be kind of pick your poison as to where you want it. Now, I personally feel that 84 is enough speed. Um, I genuinely think that speed is kind of one of those cases where some people rave about it and say, yeah, there's such a difference between 90 speed and 80 speed. With the way the defense is at the moment, it is kind of more, um, I'm actually going to hide my webcam here, lads. It is kind of more, um, it is more about, in my opinion, the ability to be able to use um, a player the way you want to use him. So if you do find yourself chasing a lot of ball, you can pop that up and get it to 87. You'll have 87 speed, 87 acceleration. Now, in saying that, you could also, you know, cap this back off here and have 88 acceleration, which will bring it into the 90 zone, which I think is probably where I'd go. So you'd have 88 low pass, 96 lofted pass. Dribbling is fine. Offensive awareness is fine. You've got a 95 rated right back. 
that's going to really kind of play as a right midfielder. He goes to a 98 right midfielder there. That is where I would play him, and that's where I think he would come into his own the best. You're really kind of neglecting defensive capabilities um, there. Because even if you train up his defensive capabilities, lads, you are conceding a lot um, with the stamina and with everything else. Um, and even at that, you're only going to get the aggression up to about an 80. So I would not kind of shoehorn him in. Um, you still have a very dominant player there if you have 96 lofted pass. Um, you know, and acceleration and speed are still high. But I definitely think go the other option with him. Just ignore defending. If you wanted to put the aggression up to like 72 you, or 73, you could do that um, to get the, the boost to defensive engagement and tackling over 75, which would probably be good. Um, but I definitely think having the acceleration high is where I would go with this card. So that's just my personal opinion on him. Um, next up, we have got uh, Trippier, who plays for Newcastle. He's had a fantastic season for them, has been one of their best players. He's got double touch, or actually, no, sorry, these player skills, I think, need to be updated. So let me just go back here a second and double check, because I think the player skills are a little outdated here. They need to be upgraded. Um, so he does have weighted pass, pinpoint crossing, edge crossing, and, of course, he does have early crosser as well. So that's a big thing. Now, he's down as an offensive fullback, okay? So that's going to be a bit different compared to cross specialist. But all these players, lads, are very similar, right? So you can see that the passing goes up to around the same zone uh, with the 96, 95 passing uh, for the lofted passes. Um, we're going to have, you know, 80 dribbling across the board. We're going to have 82 or 83 um, dexterity with balance. It's they're, they're very similar players. Now, the one thing I would say about trips is the fact that he does actually go a little bit better defensively. Not as good as Luke Shaw, um, but because of his... Let me... How would I say it? Because he can play as a, like a right midfielder as well, I would probably you know put him up as best as I could into that zone. If you are playing him as a right back, I would probably you know pop up um, the aggression into the 80 zone and pop up the defensive capabilities a little bit higher as well. Like, one rule of thumb, lads, is, right, if you're thinking about it, there's no point having unbelievable passing if you're not going to be swinging balls into the box. So if you want him defensively, you can still have your passing in the 90 zone, okay, um, especially with the low pass, but you can have your defensive capabilities quite high if you want to go that route with him. It just depends on what type of player that you want. He's a good player. And then last but not least, we have Luke Shaw. So Luke Shaw is in a similar position. He's actually more solid defensively. So I would definitely upgrade his defense and have him as kind of a player that plays left back um, instead of like, you know, left midfield. Uh, I do think that his capabilities and his speed and everything are suited to a left back. He doesn't have early crosser as his play style um, compared to the other two boys. He does have pinpoint crossing and true passing though. And he is on standard form and he does have blocker and interception. So those blocker and interception stats is what ties it for me or what swings it for me to raise up his aggression, his tackling and his defensive stats there. And then also you can just put a bit of an engine on him. You know, you can go to the eight on that. You can go to the eight on that. You can go to the four on that or maybe even six on that. And then you can go 10 on passing or whatever you want to do to get the passing up. You're not going to be passing as much um, with Luke Shaw, I would say. I mean, if you get into the position that you can go up the pitch, you can still have, you know, 91 plus with the pinpoint crossing and the, um, the edged crossing there. I mean, obviously over, over kind of compensating for that. But, you know, I would definitely... Uh, improve his physicality and improve his defensive capabilities i would even go if you're looking for a defender i would go 90 aggression uh, it's a bit of a pity he can't pay, play center back because you could put lovely ping balls in kind of pirlo-esque balls in over the top but yeah that is just a quick video on the three boys um if you want alternatives to these lads obviously you're not going to be able to replicate the edged crossing one um because that's a unique player skill to these players but if you do want an alternative to these players, let me know and we will do one of that. I mean, obviously, just really quickly, one good alternative is uh, Grimaldo, this guy from Benfica. He's a very good player, very good attacker. His player of the week version was good as well. But if you do his standard version, you can get, you know, speed, dribbling and passing very similar to these three boys. Obviously, it's not going to be a direct uh, replacement for him. Um, never mind the player skills either, they're all jumbled up. But you'll have lofted pass, low pass in the high 80s that will boost up. And then you also have speed, acceleration, balance, stamina, and the rest of the dribbling. So there is options out there just if you wanted to take a look at it. And then obviously as well, he does have pinpoint crossing, early cross, all of those stats that you could possibly want with him. So that is it for me, lads. I will be back quite soon. Don't forget to subscribe and we'll see you guys later in the live stream.